Hello, and welcome to Draw With Me. Um, I'm Danny Gregory, and it's Thursday. It's noon in New York, and I'm glad that you could join me to, to hang out, to do some drawing, to, I don't know, chew the fat. How are you all doing out there? I see hey, John Cromer in Altadena, and Holly, Karen, Danielle in Montreal, Claire in Somerville, and Carmina in Chicago. Thank you all for joining me for another action-packed, thrilling session of Draw With Me. It's been, it's been a while since it's just been you and me, right? Last week, we had uh, Ian Fenley joining us. Amazing, right? That was really, really fun. We drew a scene from New York, my hometown, and uh, Ian's workshop is still... Uh, in the future. It's coming up in another week or so, so there's still time to sign up for that. But uh, meanwhile, I'm here with you, and we're just going to figure out something to do, something to draw. Um, these last few weeks have been like a new wave of stressfulness. <laughs> I'm not going to go into it too much. I think we're all used to it by now. We've all talked our our hearts and souls out about it, but it's... Um, it just seems never-ending, doesn't it? So I find that drawing has been a great refuge for me. It's been a great uh, place to go when I'm feeling, you know, a little intense. And I've been thinking, you know, I began drawing because I was going through a period of great intensity, great change, great turmoil, much like we're going through now. Um, and I found that drawing was really a great way to sort of, we'll do a number of different things. Let me talk about a couple things that it did for me. Um, one of which was to just give me something to distract me from the things in my mind. Distraction sounds like trivial in some ways. It's almost demeaning to drawing. It's just a distraction. But I think what it did is it distracted me from a fantasy. A lot of times when we're going through tremendous change, when we're going through upsetting, unforeseeable, unexplainable things, we spend a lot of time, particularly if we're creative people, creating scenarios, right? Creating things that might happen. And our brains are churning away at that. Our inner critics are churning away at these, these f sort of um, prognostications, these these projections, let's say, projections into the future of what's going to be. There's something about drawing that breaks that cycle for me, and probably for you too, if you try it, which is it stops you from thinking about the future or dwelling on the past, but living just in the present. And a lot of times, no matter how difficult things can be, thinking about just this moment, just this moment of us sitting here with each other, sketchbook in front of us, computer, iPad, whatever it is, we're here and we can say, I I'm okay right now. I'm okay. Because drawing, particularly when you're drawing from observation, you have to look now. You have to be here present. You have to be looking at what's in front of you. You can't be thinking too much in a way, too. You can't be... Um, allowing your brain and your imagination to layer on things onto your observation. You can have just pure Zen of the moment experience and you're just seeing what is. And what is, is okay. What will be, we don't know. But what is, is okay. So that's what it does for me. That's what I've been doing. I've been sitting in my garden drawing um, and, you know, when I feel that... <sighs> That feeling here in my, the pit of my stomach, right? The, just at, at just this point, right where my ribs join. Um, I'll feel that thing, or I feel it in the back of my neck, you know. And it's just this this sense of of, of fear and hopelessness. So, anyway, um, 
you know, it is, it is, as Debbie says, it is like meditation. Um, it's not, it is meditation. It's not like meditation. We are, we're meditating. And what we do with meditation is we quiet our brains, we quiet our minds, we quiet the inner critic, that jabbering monkey in our heads. And instead we say, you know what, when I am able to look objectively at this thing that I'm going to draw, I'm also able to look objectively at this moment in, in time. I'm able to look objectively at, at, um, you know, at, at me, at what is. And sometimes that objectivity is a relief. So, all right, let's talk about corgis. So corgis, um, as you probably know, are kind of dwarfish dogs. I use the term dwarf as being a, the owner of, of two previous uh, members of a different dwarf breed. Dachshunds, miniature dachshunds. My dogs were, they were dwarves. That's what they refer to. They, they have the, they've been stunted. They have these short little limbs and barrel chests and they walk like this and they, you know, they work in chocolate factories and uh, they run uh, Candyland. Is that what it is? We welcome you to Ch Lollipop Land. Lollipop Land. Anyway. So, yes, um, they're dwarf breeds, and they have, um, you know, they have limitations because of that. You know, it's difficult for them to get up on furniture. They can have back problems. Anyway. So, um, but they can live forever. Thistle says her dad's dachshund is 20 years old. Mine didn't live that long. They lived to be 13 and 12. But right now, we are dog-sitting, and we're dog-sitting for my sister and brother-in-law's corgi. His name is Marley. He is... I think he's 11 or 12. I don't want to say anything because he's lying right over there, but he is, um, he's a little overweight. I mean, I tried to pick him up on the couch, <laughs> sit and watch TV with us last night, and I almost like I pulled something. But he, And he also um, has this very thick fur, and we've been using this brush on him called the Furminator, which rips out the undercoat. They get this very thick undercoat. And here in Phoenix, it is insanely hot. This week is actually kind of temperate because it's only like 102 degrees. Next week, it's going up to 112. So we want to get that supposed winter coat off him so that he's a little looser and uh, also so he stops shedding. So anyway. Dana, no uh, offense to corgis. They do have limits. I mean, they are feisty creatures. Although I have to say Marley. Well, let's just say this. That's kind of, that's 95% that's of the day is that. So, um, so today I was thinking we would draw Marley or draw a corgi. You don't have to draw a Marley and you don't have to draw a corgi. You don't have to draw a dog. You don't have to draw anything. It would be nice if you did. Draw whatever you want. I'm going to draw Marley because I wanted to include him in my, in my diary and this illustrated journal that I've been doing about my uh, time here in Phoenix. And Marley, he's been staying with us since we came back from Flagstaff on Sunday. We went up to Flagstaff, which is... Um, up in the mountains, I guess, of Arizona. I'm not quite sure exactly the geography, but it is like, I think 7,000 feet up, which gave me a mild headache for a day. It's also significantly cooler. I mean, it was like sweater weather there. So we spent two or three days there. It was fine. It was windy, but honestly, I'm fine with this insanely hot weather that we have here. It's fine with me, it's fine. So anyway, so when we came back here, we brought him with us to stay with us for a few days until my sister and brother-in-law come back. So he's leaving today, but it's just been nice to have a dog around. So, so yes, so um, we do have this picture that, that we're going to draw from. I, I shared it with you at the beginning. I think Morgan has shared it with you, and here it is too. This is the URL, bit.ly slash DWM618. So that's a draw with me, June 18th. Pretty clever, right? So yes, so just go there and you can download it if you want to. Um, I'll probably put it up on the screen a little bit. I don't, I don't really want to have it up there all the time. So um, if you want to draw him, whatever. Um, I've drawn corgis before. Um, here's, I've drawn them on my iPad at various points. 
So here is, this is like a puppy corgi. It's super cute and super full of energy. And uh, yeah, that's a very cute one. And here is a clown corgi. I think that's, that, that's one of the color patterns that they have. They have like a tricolor and I think a clown. I don't, know really. I don't really know what I'm talking about, but these guys look like clowns. So I made this corgi clown combo. Send in the corgis. This is just, I don't know why I did this. I would just, you know how they have these barn paintings in New England? I thought that was kind of a fun thing to do. So I did a barn painting of a corgi as if it was like an old corgi brand tractor covers. I don't know what it is, but it's corgis and there it is. And then uh, this is like the most common view of uh, Marley that we've had. Marley, so his name is Marley Falstaff. Yeah, I'm not sure why, but um, he's more Falstaffian than like Marley from um, Christmas Carol. But he's in Marley. He's also has a nickname, Lids. He has other nicknames, some of which we've given him. Um, we call him the Burrito. No, we originally called him the Kilbasa. Why? Because I'm used to calling our old our dachshunds wieners, but he's clearly not a wiener, but he is kind of like a kielbasa. So we've been calling him kielbasa. Then for some reason it became burrito, and then um, he loves to roll in any kind of dirt. So he came back from this trip bright, covered with bright orange dirt. So I named him churro, which is sort of an adaptation. So yes, so so I've drawn corgis before. This is not a new thing, but it's going to be fun. So uh, let me see. There's a few other things I want to show you before we get drawing. So hopefully you've gotten this drawing now. You've gotten the Marley picture. You're ready to go. Um, but here we go. Um, Thistle says, corgi butts are a thing among groomers. They frequently scissor their tails into hearts. Hmm, interesting. Oh, I see like the... Yes, I get it. With a sort of butthole in the center. Mm. Romantic. Lovely. Okay, <laughs> what else do I want to show you? Okay, so... Where is that? Um, let me switch to this camera. So, here we go. Father's Day is coming up. This is what Jack sent me. Can you see that? It is, you know, Keep on Trucking was, come on, was created, of course, by uh, Mr. Natural. He's a character from uh, one of my favorite artists, Robert Crumb. Yeah, so there we have it. I said to him, thanks, but who'd have ever thunk that that was actually a useful <laughs> useful and thoughtful gift to give your dad. Yep, we live in strange times. What else? These. This is a stack of ramekins. Do you know what a ramekin is? It's this like little tiny bowl. They use it in uh, for serving like tapas and things, and maybe they use it for baking little, little souffles in. Not me though, I'm using it for pallets for ink, because I've been tending, as I've been doing a lot of stuff with ink, I've been tending to um, just grab plates from the cupboard and cover them with ink. And I just decided, you know, probably not a very healthy thing to do. I do have this little saucer, and I'm gonna be using that. I'm gonna be working, by the way, today, probably just in ink, ink wash, but um, I do have a few exciting other things. I have this. Here we go. Yes, this just arrived. Thank you, Amazon. This just arrived. It is Yasutomo Sumi ink. I think I mentioned Sumi ink to you in the past. It is this really nice Japanese ink. And it is, I find it softer and warmer than India ink. But I have India ink as well here. I have it in this thing that my art fairy gave to me. I've told you about my art fairy, a very generous 
um, sketchbook school student who lives here in Phoenix and who gave me some art supplies when I was, didn't have anything when I first got here. I also got this thing. This comes from a company called Gorilla Painter and it is a palette cup. Okay, so it has a gasket. I don't think you can see it in here. It has a rubber gasket and so you can take India ink with you and you don't have to worry about it. I just got some on my hands, but theoretically you don't have to worry about it leaking everywhere. So now, I, now of course, in showing you that, I've managed to spill some, but yeah, so that's the theory behind this. But also you can, it has a little thing, so you can take your sketchbook and you can just carry, come on. Yeah, so now you have this. It's really designed for um, people to use thinner, not thinner, um, varnish, you know, and turpentine and, you know, etc. for um, oil painting, but it also works really nicely for oil, for ink, and as I said, it doesn't spill. So then, when, wherever you are, you pull this out, you got your dip pen, ching, and you don't have to carry around a big bottle. It's still a little messy, I may have overfilled it, but it's theoretically gonna work great. So I just got that, and uh, means that I can go outside and not have to carry a big bottle of ink with me. And the more I wipe it, the more... <laughs> this is a terrible demonstration. The more I show you how great it is, the more I'm permanently staining my fingers. All right. That's what happens when you work with ink sometimes, sometimes. Don't let this dissuade you. Ink is great. So, all right, so let's draw Marley. Um, I have, what else do I have here? I have my my book, I have a blank page, and I have various pens. I have a whole set of microns that I also just recently acquired. So I have the, um, the whole gamut, the whole gamut, the whole range. These are nice and uh, waterproof and so forth. So 05 all the way to, oh, oh, sorry, 005 all the way to 08. Let's see if I'm going to use all of them, but, um, and what else do I have? I've got a couple of water brushes, but I also have a thing of water, so that means I'm pretty well covered. I also have a kind of a crummy watercolor, watercolor brush, yes, you suck, okay. And then I have these, so, all right, so let's get going. So I'm going to put a little bit of just a tiny soupçon of um, some ink into one of these guys, just a little bit. I don't really want to go crazy initially. I'll come back and add some more probably. And uh, you know, I don't know why I'd have all these ramekins, the ramekin collection, but uh, we'll see. I'm just, I just got them. I'm just figuring out how exactly to incorporate them. So, okay, so um, you know what? I. I printed out that picture, but maybe I'll try it nah. Okay, I was going to draw him from life, but he keeps, he's like wedged in the corner now, so that's not going to work. Um, so instead, let us, let's just look at the picture. I've got the picture set up here. Um, I'll set it up for you here so you can see it. There it is again. There's Marley. Let me show it to you big. Um, and I'm going to put, just put it there. So, I really want to get this nice and wet though, because I want to start with a very diluted version of this. Uh, I'll take this picture away in a second, but for those of you who can't be bothered to download it, um, there you have it. So what I'm doing is I, I like to just do this really quickly just to get that first thing. And I do do it with this kind of just very diluted Sumi ink. Just, um, boy, I wish I had a better brush. So 
This guy, okay. So yeah. Um, okay, I'm gonna get rid of Marley now so you can see, because I'm afraid. Oh, I'll just make him really tiny. There you go. So, so you, you know theoretically that's what I'm doing, okay? But as I said, I like to just kind of do a kind of quick impressionish, impressionish thing first. I'm just sort of just indicating where he is. I mean, I probably should have left those whites whiter, but it's okay. I'll, I'm gonna come back. So you can see that the Somi ink is, you see how it's just shades of warmish gray. It is not as black as India ink. If you do it undiluted, it, it, it'll be a lot darker, you know, but it is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a gentler, kinder kind of ink. And so what I like about, well, there's many things I like about it, but, um, I like the fact that that it's somewhat forgiving, considering that it's ink. You're not utterly committed, you know? You're not utterly committed to that blackness that ink can give you, you know? And um, this general approach that I'm doing is, those of you who took Own Mars workshop uh, a few weeks ago, you will remember this approach that she did, which is basically to um, lay down watercolor, or in this case, ink wash, as sort of the, the general volume uh, of the subject, but not necessarily your final. So this is just kind of my first impression of what I'm seeing. And, uh, you know, can you see already how it feels a little bit like a Japanese brush painting, right? It's that softness of this thing, of this. It's also quite nice for doing something like fur. And uh, I'm quite familiar now with Marley's fur. Um, literally yesterday and the day before, we went out into the garden and uh, took this, the Furminator, which is this heavy duty kind of brush with teeth and a blade in it, and just like attacked him. And it was insane how much came out. It was really insane. It was like another dog came out. <laughs> now, two dogs. A slightly thinner Marley, as well as um, this, this hair, hair dog, dog made of hair. So, yeah. So... Yeah, so let me just step out of the way. In fact, let me in fact move out of the way. I'll move over here. Um, yeah, okay, so now you can see the whole thing. Let me go back to where I was in my corner and uh, shift this guy over a bit. So yeah, so that's, that's, that might be all I do. You know, I don't know that I necessarily need yet to do a lot more. If this is just sort of setting up these, these kind of a little bit of contrast here just to bulk it up. But what's also nice about Sumi Ink here is, um, is it changes a little bit as it dries, so it gets a, even a little bit lighter. So you really end up with 
with gentleness. And what's nice about that also is you can always go back in, as I'm going to do now, you can always go back in and just add a bit more if you want to later on. You know, you're not committed in your first um, pass. You can add some more and you can make it a little less diluted. So you can build up your layers and that again gives you some choice in the matter. Because sometimes drawing with ink can be a little scary because you say, well, what if I make a mistake? I think your only mistake would be thinking that you might make a mistake because you will make a mistake. I've already made a half a dozen mistakes that I have not told you about because I'm ashamed of them, deeply ashamed. But I can always go back and kind of overcome some of these so-called mistakes by adding more layer. Okay, so now let's try, let's, let's leave this to dry a second. And let's try, I'm gonna tr try my new inkwell. All right. Ugh. Don't fail, don't humiliate me again. You ain't well, you. All right. So. So yeah, so I'm using just this, a dip pen. And what I'm going to do with the dip pen is I'm going to sort of go in and add some details. Just sharpening things up, you know, so that uh, In theory, I could have done all this with um, with the brush. I could have. This is still a little bit wet, so um, the, the ink wash is a little bit wet. I'm kind of rushing it because you don't have all day to sit around watching ink dry. Um, you probably have incredibly interesting places to go. It's not like you're in quarantine or in lockdown, are you? sure you want to go outside and play. So I'm trying to rush this a bit. You think I need a new inkwell? But this is ink. I mean, I do have this new inkwell. It's tiny though. I'm just testing it out because uh, it's new. It's cool. But um, it's, it's not incredibly practical for what I'm doing here. Um, but you don't really need a giant inkwell. At least, you know, I think, I think it's, um, you don't need to pick up that much ink at a time. It's not like, it's not like um, paint where you need huge amounts of it. What's nice about the dip pen, and it's even nicer when you actually have a dry surface to work on, is you can add all this fur texture and um, it just adds another kind of layer into all the different things that are going on here. In some ways, the, the first thing that you have laid down, this, this ink um, wash, it kind of is filling in the holes between these little cross hatches. So you're not getting the jarring contrast of just a black line on a white piece of paper. 
you're getting um, just a bit more kind of depth and dimension. Some people complain about the sound of the dip pen. I don't really understand why. I think it's a great sound. It's the sound of industry. It's the sound of stuff going on. Now, there's some things in here that are a little bit strange to me right now, which is like his eye. His eye is looking a little fish-like right now. And I'm really a little nervous about giving him his smile, but I'm going to try it anyway. Okay. Boy, that can... You know, you can just totally ruin a dog drawing by making him look too much like a cartoon character smiling, but... Yes. So, um... go back in now with a little bit of the Sumi ink, particularly around this eye. This eye is just really troubling. And then the nose too. You have to be careful at this stage because of course you can animate this India ink. I animate it, I mean, when you put water onto not 100% dried India ink, it suddenly becomes wet and starts moving around and blending. And you can kind of screw up your sharp lines that were one of the benefits of using the dip pen. You know, I like I could do all the details of his body, but I'm sort of thinking I'm not going to because because I kind of like having just the focus be on the head. So, um, but I am going to sort of sharpen up some of these. He has some quite hard edges to him. Here, let me show you. Yeah, you, you can see in there. He's got some hard edges in some places, demarcations between black and white. So I want to kind of honor that. I'm also going to do somewhat like I did this lines in the cross hatching, I'm going to do that to add some texture into the white fur. And yeah, see, I just did it. Just got to be careful. I can Now, I wish that I had a white pen, because if I did, I would be able to bring out just a couple of highlights. I don't, wouldn't want to overdo it, but things like having a little tiny, isn't, even though he doesn't really have a highlight in his eye, it might help to have that there. So, all right. Um, He's not quite as runty as he is in real life, is he? My guy, my version of him. He's a bit more wolfish, wolf-like, lupine. And maybe that's my, that's my gift to him, is to say, you know what? I'm gonna give you a slightly bigger dog's body. Well, now I've ruined it by giving him, by highlighting his little mini legs, but Anyway, so 
What I'm going to do with this page, as you can see, this whole part of the page is empty, but I want to write about him and I want to write about, I'm not going to do it now because I need some time to concentrate and I don't, I need to be, I need alone time people to actually do the writing um, because I want to think about A, what I'm going to write and B, how I'm going to write it. You know, like the, just do a little, you know, careful writing. And that is a thing that's, I think, really important. And there's nothing worse than seeing a beautiful drawing that somebody has then written next to, you know, written a little caption or written some kind of journal part, but they've done it in a, in a careless, quick, sloppy way. And what happens when you do that is it just, it like completely undermines it. It's like, it's weird. It's like, you should put as much effort, I think, into your calligraphy and your handwriting in a journal as you do into the drawing. So, you know, and, and the act of actually coming up with words and thinking about it uses a different part of your brain than the actual calligraphy. So you could go so far as to actually write it out in advance. Um, my suggesting that to you doesn't mean that I ever, ever do it. I mean, I've done it very, very occasionally. It can be a little over the top, a little, a little anal, but um, yeah. All right, that's kind of it. Um, what else? I would like to show you, it just occurred to me, I'd like to show you a couple pages in this journal, but I can't now because this page is wet. So maybe we'll come back to that and uh, we will talk about it once this dries a bit, okay? Okay, who's going, who's, I, I'm sorry, if you guys probably have been having a really interesting conversation. Um, so Priyanshu seems very interested in whether that's my dog. Priyanshu, that's kind of obnoxious. What's going on here, dude? I've already explained that it's a dog that I'm dog sitting for. Um, yeah, it's kind of gross when people just sort of start coming in and saying stupid things in the chat. Um, what sketchbook am I using? I'm using a watercolor moleskin. And uh, yeah, so... Lydia says, I've gone through eight sketchbooks during this plague. Drawing has maintained my sanity. I'm now very sane. That is fantastic. That's what we need. That's the mental health program we need. Is to just prescribe, prescribe a good dosage of drawing. This is sun tea. We just figured out. We just got a special thing to make sun tea in. I mean... If you're going to endure the sun of Arizona, you might as well put it to work and make some tea out of it, right? Um, have you been drawing all along with me? Have you been drawing morally? If you have, can you share it and use this URL? I mean, not URL, hashtag, daily drawing habit. If you do, I'll be able to find it and see it. And... Uh, have a look at what you did while I was doing this. That would be really cool. Another thing I want to say to you is I'd like to invite you to... Um, I've been writing. I've been writing quite a lot since this whole thing began. Um, I've been writing a lot of essays. And I've been writing about, about creativity, about creative blocks. It's the kind of thing that... I mean, I've been... I started blogging 17 years ago. And um, for a long time, I was writing about these issues on a regular basis. And then I kind of strayed from that. But I kept writing. I just wasn't sharing them as much. Some of them went into my books, but some of them went into a drawer. And um, now I've started a thing which is called Danny's List. And what it is is like every Friday, I will send you an email if you sign up for this thing. I'll send you an email with an essay. They're not long. It'll take you three minutes to read it. Sometimes they're tips, sometimes they're thought provokers, sometimes they're just kind of things I've, that have been on my mind. And um, 
a lot of people have been reading them and then writing back to me, which is interesting. So we've been having dialogues about some of this stuff. But uh, yeah, it's it's free. It's easy. You just go there and sign up for it. And if you do, I can share some of my other thoughts with you. Okay, so that's Danny's list. And then, of course, as I mentioned before, Ian Finale's um, Paint the Town Gray workshop, which is about urban sketching using shades of gray. So like today, I've been drawing this corgi using ink and wash, ink wash, shades of gray, all gray. And Ian is going to teach you how to do this, not using ink wash like I use in here, but using uh, gray brush markers. He's an amazing artist, an amazing teacher, and this workshop is going to be spectacular. So I would strongly urge you to sign up for it. I can't wait for it to happen. I can't wait to see you there. It's going to be really cool. So that's coming up um, a week from Saturday, I think. I could be wrong about that. Am I wrong, Morgan? I, I, I can never remember these dates. Anyway, um, yes. So Magdalena has been drawing Marley and hardly following the conversation. Oh, that conversation, the chat conversation. Exactly. I mean, I'm glad. Um, and Gail says, your essays have been very insightful and inspiring. I always looked forward to each one. Well, thank you, Gail. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been doing it for, for two or three months now, and it's been really fun. It's been great to have just a place to put these ideas and to get some feedback from them because a lot of times the things that are rattling around in my head, you know, there's only so much I can, I can inflict on my poor wife. She and I are here together 24 hours a day in this, I was going to say prison, but hardly that in this place. But uh, yeah, so I thought, you know, maybe you could do it. You could join with me and you could take a load off her. Um, Jeanette says, last week's essay was intense. I love that they make me think. Yes, well, I'm going to be sending one out tomorrow, tomorrow morning, um, that is about Father's Day and thoughts about what it's like to be a father and what that means and what that has to do with being creative. Um, it's, been, it's been fun. So, yes. <sighs> Thank you all for uh, for saying that you like this. Uh, you know, and I have for those people who've been writing to me in the last week or so, I have a new surprise. Some of you got this surprise from me, right? You know what I'm talking about. Um, it's a little thing that I made just for you. So if you sign up for this thing again, Danny's list, it's easy. Sketchwithschool.com. You just put in your email address so we know where to send it. No salesman will call. It's not that kind of a thing. It's just. You know, saves me the trouble of having to go and tell my publisher to do a new book in the middle of this nonsense. So yeah, so it's a it's been a it's been a nice um, thing. Am I planning to do a workshop in Mexico? Is that addressed to me? Yeah, I'd love to go do a workshop in Mexico. Well, I don't really do workshops, really, but um, I could do shoot a workshop in Mexico. That would be cool. Right now, we can't shoot workshops anywhere really getting on my nerves but i have to say we have a bunch of really cool workshops i think we have the next four workshops lined up um unfortunately none of them are in mexico some are in europe some are here and all of them are on the internet so they're all available to you um yes so um are there classes in at sketchbook school there are classes it's in um, calligraphy on, on this creative lettering also, I mean, um, yes, the hashtag for sharing your Marley drawings here is Daily Drawing Habit. Let me just leave that up there. Um, so I'll share. This is actually dry now. Let me just show you quickly, okay? Before we go, we have like a couple minutes. Let me just show you. Let me just go back to this and show you. Um, no, don't. Don't be out of focus now. That's crazy. Here we go. Come along. There we go. Okay. Um, yes, that's Marley. This is uh, this is the the front of the house that I'm staying in, with a bunch of writing next to it. I always I like to write next to the thing. This is um, this is a little thing I wrote about sun. The sun. 
and uh, what it's like to live with the sun, including this um, drawing of myself as uh, getting a lot of sun. These are morning doves, Zeneda macrura is the Latin name for these morning doves that sit on the phone line. There I am floating in the pool. Quails. These are quails and uh, running around um, surrounded by um, white oleanders. Here is uh, our, our pomegranate trees that are just really, really cool. And they've sp spewed out all these pomegranates of late. And uh, apparently it takes three or four months for them to actually um, become edible. But they are, they are covering, sorry, let me get this out of the way. They are covering this tree and uh, they are slowly going from green to red. And what else? This cactus in the garden. Here's a little thing about my feet. Uh, this is uh, a thing that I, a field guide to the chairs of Phoenix. So I think I mentioned this a couple weeks ago. I was planning to draw all the chairs in our place, and I did. So, yeah. So that is my, that is some of my stuff that I've been drawing in my spare time, and um, it's been fun. So. What is somebody saying here? Don't plan to do a workshop. Sorry, let me just quickly see if there's anything that I've been missing that you've been saying. Um, J Diamond, one J Diamond did four drawings of a poodle and one turned out right. Okay, well. <sighs> Catherine asks, do I like living in Arizona as an artist? I don't know. I don't really know that I live in Arizona yet. I mean, there's, pl I mean, I'm not sure if you mean because there's so many beautiful things to draw, which there definitely are. I haven't been able to really get out there though that much. A, it's now summer, so it's ridiculously hot, so it's much harder. But also I just haven't been going anywhere and I haven't met anybody. So soon, yes, please, I'm dying to go out and do stuff. Um, Star in your life, it is a moleskin watercolor book. Moleskin, moleskin. And uh, are they all monochromatic, Chris asks. Yes. I'm back in one of these moods. I've had them before where I don't want to work in color. I just want to work in black and white. So I saw somebody saying that they weren't interested. Yes, Marilyn, don't live in urbanization. I understand. This is not really about urbanization. In fact, we're drawing a tiny little village in Italy from a photo. But the skills that you will acquire from learning how Ian uses tone apply to drawings of farmland, apply to drawings of schnauzers, of peanut butter sandwiches. Anything you want to draw, you will learn. By learning about tone, how to apply it, how to build up levels of tone, it will help you to draw anything. So, Marilyn, uh, thank you for, for um, taking the leap anyway, despite the fact that you are... Uh, a, a rural sketcher, um, or maybe a suburban sketcher, I don't know. But in any case, the things, you know, the things will be, uh, will be helpful. Let's see. Um, Kim says, I love my surprise. Good, Kim. I'm glad you liked it. That was the surprise I was referring to before. Pentel Watercolor Journal book. It's not actually, it's a, um, it's a moleskin. It's a moleskin. I think that's what you're asking about. Is it true? Um, it is a mol moleskin. Will I move back to New York? God willing. Um, nah, New York is slowly opening up. And um, Phoenix is experiencing a spike. Arizona is. So it's like, I'm not, I'm not safe. I'm not safer here than I would have been there, right now at least. 
doesn't really matter. I mean, I didn't come here to be safe. I came here to, I didn't have a choice. But so yes, I want to go back to New York desperately. We still have our apartment there. Um, we still live there. So yeah, we've got to get back to New York. We've been toying with the idea of driving back. So we might do that. We'll see. Got to figure that out. The, the logistics. Where do we stay? How do we do it? But yes, I am. Uh, I am. No need to worry about me, though. I mean, you can worry about me by all means. But I, I mean, we literally don't leave here. We had a guy came and looked at the air conditioning yesterday, and he was outside the building. But honestly, we don't don't go anywhere. We went to Flagstaff. And we drove to an Airbnb and sat there with my brother and sister-in-law, who we are in a kind of a bubble with. Is that what it's called? You know, like a quarantine bubble? And uh, so, so far, that has been fine. Everything is good. So, yes. Ah, somebody from Thailand. How exciting. That is great. I wonder what time it is in Thailand. Is it, is it getting to be summer there, or is it, is it below the, the equator? I'm not sure. But yes, lovely. I love Thailand. I've been to Bangkok and uh, done a lot of drawings there. It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, yes, Carol says it's a hard drive in the heat. Yes, well, we drove from California to New York when we originally left California. Um, it was okay. It was okay. It was sort of interesting. It was in uh, late August, early September that we did it. So, yeah. I mean, what are we going to do? Wait until it's cool? I guess we could. Maybe we will. I don't know. It just feels better than getting on a plane. Uh, rent a rev. I'm not sure what a rev is. Rent a rev. RV. An RV. Possibly. That could be interesting. We've talked about that too. The problem is, what would you do with an RV once you got to New York? Can't imagine you trying to drive it into the city. But yes, that is possible. That would be nice. So, ah, it's midnight in Thailand. Fantastic. Well, thank you for staying up with us. And uh, thank you for, for joining. And um, Grey Wolf in Japan. How exciting. A sandbar shark. Interesting. I wonder if it's live. Do you have one in your house? So, yes. All right. So thank you all for joining me. We should all get back to our lives now. I'll see you next Thursday. Hopefully, again, you will sign up for Danny's List so that you will get something from me tomorrow. Um, and uh, that will be good. Otherwise, um, maybe I'll see you at the workshop. Maybe I'll just see you here next week, next Thursday. Same time, same location. And, oh, if you want to be reminded of this, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Subscribe to Sketchbook School's channel. And that way you'll get a notification when uh, when we start the next one up. I always kind of wait a little bit. I do a little kind of animation. I've got my new dude. I don't know if you guys saw that dude. Let me just uh, remind you of him uh, as we leave. He is uh, he's a spectacular new addition to my collection um, of dudes. <laughs> Yeah, so that's my dude. Um, yes, so anyway, we just waste a little bit of time at the beginning so that if you get a notification, you can join us relatively early. But as usual, I blather for a while, so we don't usually start drawing for about 10 minutes. Do you get the surprise tomorrow? Well, you get the, you'll get an email from me tomorrow. Surprise takes a little bit of effort on your part, but you'll figure it out. Good, well, thank you all for joining me. It was really nice to be here with you again today. I needed it. Uh, I needed to work on my Marley drawing. I'm going to continue working on it. Maybe I'll share it with you in the schoolyard. Um, and uh, we will see you next Thursday. Thank you. <laughs>